वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द स्टडी ऑफ एरर्स इन मेजरमेंट टुडे वी विल डील विद द टॉपिक ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एरर्स इन मेजरमेंट इन द प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैड टोल्ड यू व्हाट आर एरर्स एंड व्हाट आर द पॉसिबल रीजंस बिहाइंड एरर्स इन मेजरमेंट वी आल्सो स्टडीड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एरर्स so now today we will study that if while doing any measurement we have to deal with a combination of error then how that can be taken care of but first and foremost we should understand what is combination of error if we do an experiment involving several measurements we must know how the errors in all the measurements combine for example mass density is obtained by dividing mass by volume of a substance we all know this that density is equal to mass by volume now if we have errors in the measurement of mass if we have errors in the measurement of mass and of the sizes or dimensions we must know what the error will be in the density of the substance like for instance when you are measuring the value of mass separately and then the volume for volume we need to know the dimensions so if there is some error in the dimensions if there is some error in dimensions if there is some error in mass then how to find out the value of density taking into consideration the errors in the measurement of both mass and volume so we must know what the error will be in the density of the substance to make such estimates we should learn how errors combine in various mathematical operations so one by one we are going to see that so let's begin with error of a sum or a difference suppose two quantities two physical quantities a and b two physical quantities a and b have measured values a plus minus delta a and b plus minus delta b respectively where delta a and delta b are their absolute errors suppose two physical quantities a and b have measured values a plus minus delta a and b plus minus delta b respectively where delta a and delta b are their absolute errors we wish to find the error delta z in the sum z equal to a plus b suppose there is a physical quantity z given by the expression a plus b where a and b are individually two different physical quantities now since in the measurement of a there is some error delta a and in the measurement of b there is some error delta b then what should be the error in the value of z that we have to find out so as there is error in, in a and b so obviously there should be some error in z so we can write down z plus minus delta z equal to a plus minus delta a plus b plus minus delta b isn't it now the maximum possible error in z how to find it out for this we have to find out delta z so delta z will be equal to a plus minus delta a 
प्लस बी प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी माइनस जेड वी कैन टेक जेड टू दर साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन नो वॉट इज जेड रिमेंबर जेड इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस बी लेट एस सब्सटीट्यूट दिस वैल्यू सो वी कैन राइट डाउन डेल्टा जेड डोंट फॉर गेट द प्लस माइनस साइन डेल्टा जेड विल बी इक्वल टू ए प्लस माइनस डेल्टा ए प्लस बी प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी एंड जेड इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस बी इज इंट इट सो नाउ वी कैन राइट डाउन प्लस माइनस डेल्टा जेड इक्वल टू ए प्लस माइनस डेल्टा ए प्लस बी प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी माइनस ए माइनस बी सो यू कैन कैंसल आउट ए एंड बी एंड यू आर लेफ्ट आउट विद द फाइनल रिजल्ट सो नाउ यू गेट द फाइनल रिजल्ट एज प्लस माइनस डेल्टा जेड इक्वल टू प्लस माइनस डेल्टा ए प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी सो वॉट शुड बी द मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल एर द मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल एर इन जेड फॉर दैट यू हैव टू कंसिडर ओनली द पॉजिटिव साइन then you will get delta z equal to delta a plus delta b isn't it so in a similar manner we can also find out the error for the difference part so we can do it quickly so if z is equal to a minus b if a has got a measured value in the while measuring the value of a if there is an error of delta a and in the value of b if the measured value is delta b the error is delta b then we may write down taking into consideration the errors z plus minus delta z equal to a plus minus delta a minus b plus minus delta b so now we have to remove the neg brackets so we can write down a plus minus delta a minus b now minus into plus is minus 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 is plus you get delta b so now you can write down a minus b प्लस माइनस डेल्टा ए प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी नो जस्ट सी ए माइनस बी इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू जेड सो वी मे राइट डाउन जेड प्लस माइनस डेल्टा जेड इक्वल टू जेड कंट आई राइट डाउन इन प्लेस ऑफ ए माइनस बी एज जेड सो जेड प्लस माइनस डेल्टा ए प्लस माइनस डेल्टा बी You can cancel out z from both the sides. So now you are left with plus minus delta z equal to plus minus delta a plus minus delta b. So again, the maximum possible error. delta z is equal to delta a plus delta b so you may find that in both the cases of sum and difference of quantities we obtain a similar result hence we may form a rule what should be that rule so now we get the result when two quantities are added or subtracted in the absolute error in the final result 
when two quantities are added or subtracted the absolute error in the final result is the sum of the absolute errors in the individual quantities that is the result that we obtain when two quantities are added or subtracted the absolute error in the final result is the sum of the absolute errors in the individual quantities now this is an important result that needs to be remembered now let us solve one question the temperature of two bodies measured by a thermometer are t1 equal to 20 degree celsius plus minus 0 0.5 degree celsius now this part is the error and t2 equal to 50 degree celsius plus minus 0 0.5 degree celsius calculate the temperature difference and the error therein so how to find out the solution to this question so the temperature difference let the temperature difference be dif given by t dash so t dash will be equal to t2 minus t1 that will be equal to 50 degree celsius plus minus 0 0.5 5 degree Celsius minus 20 degree Celsius plus minus 0 0.5 degree Celsius so on solving you will get T dash equal to 30 degree Celsius plus minus 1 degree Celsius so that will be the answer so in this manner we can solve questions based on errors now error of a product or a quotient first of all let us consider the part consisting of the product let the quantity z be written as product of quantities a into b if the measured value of a is a plus minus delta a and that of b is plus minus delta b we have to substitute these values in the product and obviously since there is an error in the measured values of a and b obviously there should be some error in the value of z isn't it so let us substitute these values so now taking into consideration the error we will get z plus minus delta z equal to a plus minus delta a multiplied by b plus minus delta b let us carry out the product we will get a b plus minus a delta b plus minus b delta a and the last part will be plus minus delta a and delta b now out of these four terms just see the last since it is having a very small value that is it is negligible so we will neglect this value we will not consider this in the calculation part owing to its very small value that's why we are neglecting this term so once we are done with this part what is the result that we are obtaining we will get z plus minus delta z equal to a b plus minus a delta b plus minus b delta a now let us 
डिवाइड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड बाय जेड एंड राइट हैंड साइड बाय ए बी नो वाई वी आर डिवाइडिंग बोथ द साइड्स विद डिफरेंट टर्म्स Are we actually dividing both the sides by different terms? No, since z is equal to a b, z is equal to a b. No, so on one side we are dividing with z, and on the other side we are dividing by a b. Actually, we are dividing both the sides with the same term. So what shall we get? We will get z by z. Plus minus delta z by z equal to a b. Now coming to the right hand side, a b by a b plus minus a delta b by a b plus minus b delta a by a b. So now you can cancel out. So what are we left with? We are left with one plus minus delta z by z equal to one plus minus delta a by a plus minus delta b by b. So now you can cancel out one from both the sides. So the maximum relative error is delta z by z equal to delta a by a plus delta b by b. So we can see that when two quantities are multiplied, the relative error in the result is the sum of the relative errors in the multipliers. Now let us try out for the quotient part. Z is equal to a by b. Taking into consideration the error part, we can write down z. Plus minus z equal to a plus minus delta a by b plus minus delta b. Now z plus minus delta z can be further written as a plus minus delta a and then b plus minus delta b. Is to the power minus one. Can I write it down? Isn't it? So now, in the next step, I am writing z one plus minus delta z by z equal to a. One plus minus delta a by a and b raised to the power minus one. One plus minus delta b by b to the power minus one. Can I write it down? Check it once again. Isn't it? So now I may write down z one plus minus delta z by z equal to a by b one plus minus delta a by a and one plus minus delta b by b raised to the power minus one. 
I can cancel these two terms from both the sides as z is equal to a by b. Now, if I consider the binomial expansion binomial expansion of this particular term only, only this particular term 1 plus minus delta b by b raised to the power minus 1. We know from our understanding of binomial expansion that whenever we are carrying out an expansion where of 1 plus x raised to the power n where x is very small as compared to 1, then the result simply restricts to 1 plus n x and we can neglect the higher order terms owing to the very small value of x. So, in a similar manner since delta b by b is having a very small value, so we can apply this knowledge of binomial expansion in this case and hence we may write down the same expression as 1 plus minus delta z by z equal to 1 plus minus delta a by a into 1 plus minus delta b by b. Now, we can carry out the multiplication. So, we will get this will be the result. We can cancel out 1 from both the sides and we may also ignore the last term owing to its very small value. So, now we are left with the final result. So, we are getting plus minus delta z by z equal to plus minus delta a by a and plus minus delta b by b. Again, the maximum value of relative error will be delta z by z equal to delta a by a plus delta b by b, is not it? So, it is quite similar to the result that we had obtained in the case of product of two quantities. In that case also the maximum relative error in z was coming like this, the maximum relative error in a plus maximum relative error in b. So, hence we can conclude a very important result that, so we can say that when two quantities are multiplied or divided, the relative error is the result is the sum of the relative errors in the multipliers. When two quantities are multiplied or divided, the relative error in the result is the sum of the relative errors in the multipliers. Now, again I would like to lay stress on this fact that it is a very important proof and it is asked many a times in the examination. So, you should practice it very well. Now, we are left out with a question. Two resistors of resistances R1 equals 100 plus minus 3 ohm and R2 equals 200 plus minus 4 ohm are connected in parallel. Find the equivalent resistance. Now, for parallel combination of two resistors, if we write down R dash, then we know it is equal to R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. So, that should be equal to 100 into 200 R1 R2, R1 R2 will be equal to 200 into 100 divided by R1 plus R2, 200 plus 100. So, that will give you 300 by sorry 
that will give you 20,000 by 300 you can cancel out two zeros so you are left out will 200 by 3 that is 66.7 ohm but we have to include the errors also how to do that so then from 1 by r dash equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 we get delta r dash by r dash square equal to delta r1 by r1 square plus delta r2 by r2 square therefore delta r dash will be equal to r dash square times delta r1 by r1 square plus r dash square times delta r2 by r2 square now we simply need to substitute the values so now we may write down equal to 66.7 by 100 to the power 3 2 into 3 plus 66.7 by 200 square into 4 and that will give you 1.8 therefore r dash will be equal to 66.7 plus minus 1.8 ohm so here delta r is expressed as 1.8 instead of 2 to keep in conformity with the rules of significant figures about significant figures we will be having a full length discussion but for the time being again this question is asked many a times in the examination i have taken an example from your textbook so it will be convenient for you to go through the solution given in your textbook and have a better understanding now error in case of a measured quantity raised to a power say z is equal to a square then delta z by z will be equal to delta a by a plus delta a by a that will be equal to 2 times delta a by a so the relative error in a square is 2 times the error in a the relative error in a physical quantity raised to the power k is the k times the relative error in the individual quantity now a question might arise in your mind how can we prove it let us do it suppose z is equal to a to the power n if there is an error delta n a then we may write z plus minus delta z equal to a plus minus delta a raised to the power n now taking out z as common I may write it down as this on the other side again taking out a to the power n as common I can write down then cancel out these two terms as z is equal to a to the power n now 1 plus minus delta z by z again you can take binomial expansion for this particular term as delta a by a is very small so you can neglect the ignore uh, the higher order terms so now we may write it down as 1 plus minus n times delta a by a cancel out one from both the sides so what are you all left with 
you're left with delta z by z equal to n times delta a by a isn't it so now as I was giving you the example z equal to a square so I was writing delta z by z as um, 2 times delta a by a similarly for z equal to a to the power n delta z by z will be equal to n times delta a by a so this means the relative error in a physical quantity raised to a power k is k times the relative error in the individual quantity let us see an example the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum is t equal to 2 pi times root over l by g measured value of l is 20 centimeter known to 1 millimeter accuracy and time for 100 oscillations of the pendulum is found to be 90 seconds using a wristwatch of 1 second resolution. What is the accuracy in the determination of g? So, we know that g is equal to 4 pi square l by t square. t is equal to t by n and delta t is equal to delta t by n. So, therefore, delta t by t will be equal to delta t by small t. Now, the errors in both L and t are the least count errors therefore delta g by g will be equal to delta l by l plus 2 times delta t by t so this will be equal to 0 0.1 by 20.0 plus 2 times 1 by 90 so that will be equal to 0 0.027 thus the percentage error in g will be 100 times delta g by g is equal to 100 times delta l by l plus 2 into 100 into delta t by t. So, that will be equal to 3 percent. So, in this manner by solving more number of questions, similar type of questions based upon error analysis you will get a much better understanding as to how to solve questions based on combination of errors whether it is error of a sum or a difference error of a product or a quotient or error in case of a measured quantity raised to a power so i would like to sum up the results like this for sum or difference whenever it is a sum or a difference then plus minus delta z is equal to plus minus delta a plus minus delta b maximum value is always for the positive sign 
when it is multiplication product or quotient then plus minus delta z by z is equal to plus minus delta a by a plus minus delta b by b and when it is a product when it is a power then delta z by z is equal to k times delta a by a now just let let me tell you if z is equal to a to the power p b to the power q by c to the power r then how to write down then delta z will be delta z by z will be equal to p times delta a by a plus q times delta b by b plus r times delta c by c don't be confused just because the term c has been put in the denominator you have to put a negative sign no in all the cases this will get added up thank you